Library. I am Cindy and today I want to talk about everything I have read thus far in December. Hard to believe that we're already past the middle of the month, but so it is. So let us take a look here. First we'll do the physical books. A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. This one is a seasonal favorite. I've been reading it every year for a while now. Always greatly enjoy it. And this year, it's been a bit extra fun because Katie from Books and Things has been uh, discussing each of the five staves. Uh, we're up to the stave four now. Stave five should be released any day now. So, very fun. Always a Christmas favorite, like I said. For the few of you who don't know, this is about a man named Ebenezer Scrooge who starts out not very nice. There's just no other way to put it. He is a miser and treats everyone horribly. But on Christmas Eve, he is visited by a number of ghosts that help him rethink his life and show him, well, let's just say, uh, expand his vision to more than just himself. And it is a classic for a reason. I've also read The Father Chris, or Letters from Father Christmas by J.R.R. R. Tolkien from, oh, let's see, when was it? 1922. And this one says 1942. He wrote annual letters from Father Christmas to his children. And Oh, they are just completely wonderful. Completely. This book by Elizabeth Googe, I Saw Three Ships. Now this is kind of based on the Christmas Carol, I Saw Three Ships. But, let's see, when is this even set? Well, it is set in England, and it is set maybe in the 18th, maybe in the 19th century. It is about... A little girl named Polly who lives with her two elderly aunts who, well, they're kind, but they're a bit strict. And especially around Christmas, they have certain ideas of how things should be done. But Polly insists on Christmas magic, let's put it that way. Wonderful little story. And another book by Elizabeth Googe is A Christmas Book. And this one, uh, it's interesting. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, chapters with different Christmas stories. And only two of them are new. The others are taken from her various works. But very fun. Definitely put me in the Christmas mood this year. So I'm so glad I found this. And yes, I had to read The Life Day Treasury from Star Wars. Holiday stories from a galaxy far, far away. And this one also has um, 
Let's see, where is it? Ah, here it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stories. And the beginning of each story has an illustration. So it is written by George Mann and Kevin Scott. And the illustrations are by Grant Griffin. But yes, these are all stories related to the Star Wars universe holiday known as Life Day. But they are definitely have a lot tied into what we would call uh, the Christmas or holiday season here in December. So it would be appropriate to read this in December. And it totally was. Each story is separate, set on a different world. So you have one on Coruscant, one on Tatooine, um, one on uh, Endor, and another on Kashyyyk. But all of them celebrate the holiday season and the magic that comes with it. So very happy that I read that one. It's perfectly perfect for this holiday season. So let's see, what else? What else? A Timeless Christmas by Alexis Stanton. Now this one uh, that was made into a Hallmark movie. So that tells you a lot of what you need to know about it. Christmas romance. In this case, oh, it is a bit of a time travel one. Our heroine is in the modern day, maybe five years before current, and she works at a museum slash historical house where this inventor lived. I want to say it's New York or Pennsylvania. Either way. And this particular inventor, he disappeared when he was around 35 and no one has any idea what he, whatever happened to him. Uh, and among other things, they do uh, not exactly reenactments, but they play characters showing around the house of this inventor. Well, guess who should show up one day? suddenly but the inventor himself although of course it takes a while for everyone else to believe that but that is what happens and of course love ensues because that's what happens with a christmas romance it was fun it was cute i enjoyed it couldn't say it was great but it was good I also have read Christmas Storms and Sunshine by Elizabeth Gaskell. And it's just a little Christmassy short story. Very Victorian, but still fun. Uh, same with the Christmas Highlands by Mary Elizabeth Brandon. Uh, Christmas hirelings, uh, again, very Victorian, uh, but, and that one, this, the Christmas hirelings are a bit longer, I should say, but still very enjoyable. It all starts with an old man, and uh, Christmas has gotten rather down for him and his niece since well, lots has happened in their families, and they're both no longer young. His niece certainly isn't a child, at least. She's of marriageable age. So she suggests hiring some children to bring the Christmas spirit to the house. And, well, let's just say that they do hire some children, and they do indeed bring Christmas to the house, and I will leave it at that.
Um, I also read The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Elizabeth Han. So, the premise is that Holly Chase, she starts out at the very beginning as a Scrooge, even though she's, what, only 16 at the beginning of the book? I think that's right. 16 or 17. She lives in California. Uh, she lives the Hollywood life. She is extremely spoiled and very much acts like Scrooge to everyone around her. However, just like Scrooge, on Christmas Eve, she gets through the visitations from ghosts trying to get her to change her life. She doesn't. And a couple days afterwards, she dies. Only what happens to her is she is recruited by a company called Project Scrooge. She is allowed to stay alive, sort of, as long as she is helping them uh, try to uh, help Scrooges become non-Scrooges. And her assignment is to be the ghost of Christmas past. So, of course, Holly doesn't particularly enjoy any of this. But one Christmas, about five years later, the Scrooge is a bit different. He is about 17 himself. It's already going in a very Scrooge-like direction. But this is different from most Scrooges who are old and have a lifetime of cares and regrets, even if they don't admit it. This is someone Holly can actually relate to, and it doesn't hurt that he is cute. So, this Christmas project Scrooge's uh, activity is very different. And it's a YA, so yes, there is romance. And Holly herself is quite annoying at the beginning. Wasn't sure I was going to be able to get through this. And it is a very YA book. But I will say I was very impressed by the ending. It was not a typical YA ending, and I was very impressed with that. And Holly does change a lot over the course of the book and learn to care. And the references to the original Christmas Carol are great. So, well, let's see, what else? Um, I read The Invisible Library by Genevieve Kogman, I think it is. Oh, and that is the story of the librarian from the secret library. Uh, these librarians, well, the secret library is a library kind of in the middle of all dimensions. And so... They are sent to get library books from all these different dimensions to take them to the invisible library where they will be safe. And it's not just any books they're going after. It's usually books that are an original edition, if not an original manuscript, uh, something that is unique. And they will get they will get the item legitimately if they can. They can't always, which has slightly disturbing implications, but that's another story. Um, this particular world our heroine is sent to is rather steampunky, late 1800s, early 1900s, with not only a steampunk element, but fairies are involved too and there's a dragon so 
I enjoyed it. I'd call it good. I'm not sure I would call it great, and I don't know if I will want to continue the series or not, but I certainly don't um, mind having read the first one. Ah, the next one is Star Trek DS9, Deep Space Nine, Edition Time by Andrew J. Robbins. Now, this one, I need to preface. Um, for the past, well, let me preface further back than that. Back in the 90s, I watched plenty of The Next Generation. And it is true that I got into Babylon 5, my junior or senior year of high school. How I missed Deep Space Nine, I do know. We're past the middle of season four now, and so far, aside from the pilot, which I deliberately went back later and watched, I have only found four episodes that have anything that I recognize beyond the general characters and things like that. So we've been greatly enjoying it, or at least I have been greatly enjoying it. So, the stitch in time. The fun thing about this is it is written by Andrew J. Robinson, who actually plays Garrick in Deep Space Nine. Garrick, the uh, exiled tailor slash former member of the Obsidian Order slash Patriot, I guess. <laughs> anyway, he um, wrote this book, which is great because it's all about Garrick. We have several timelines. Uh, the frame timeline is hmm, frame timeline is after the events of the show, so the Dominion War is over, Cardassia is in ruins, Jarek has come home to help do what he can to rebuild, and these are letters back to Dr. Bashir talking about what's going on. Those take up a minority of the book. Then we have extracts from what is basically Garrick's um, as you could call it, diary. And these are written uh, mostly during the time of the show for the most part. And the last part gets a bit more complicated, but anyway. And the main part, which we spend most of the time on, is Garrick. Well, actually, I think it's in third person, but basically the story of Garrick's life. How did he get to where we come, we see him? Uh, very, very interesting. We get a look at Cardassian life. We also get a look at, uh, well, we've got hints of some things in the show. This expands on them. Like, uh, we know that Gold Ducat hates Garrick for something he did to his father. Well, we get full details about that. So, and then the last book I read this month is A Total Quality by Jennifer. Yeah, so it's probably number 12 in the series, something like that. It might be a bit more interesting uh, if you read the ones before, but you don't necessarily have to have done that. Um, basically, each chapter is a different member of the quilting circle's um, perspective. It is the day after Thanksgiving, and instead of getting all the Black Friday sales, this quilters group has decided to get together and work on their Christmas projects. 
And of course, we get details about what's going on in their lives, what has happened before in the past, to make them feel they are more, things like that. Now, Genevieve yeah, Verini is the one who did uh, which one is Christmas Bells that I absolutely loved last year. Uh, similar in structure in that the modern uh, half of that book each was also from a different perspective and then tied it all up at the end. I enjoyed it. I didn't love it as much. And I wonder if the reason why is because the other book was more complex and that it interwove the story of Henry Wade's first Longfellow during the Civil War. So I don't know. I mean, it was still fun. Probably read it again. And I'll probably have to remember reading it right after Thanksgiving because that is what this is most appropriate to. But still, perfect for the holiday season. So that is what I have read this month so far. You can see, mm, excuse me, you can see it has been an excellent. Uh, it has been an excellent reading month, certainly gotten me into the Christmas mood, as I hope you could tell by my Christmas tree earrings. And we will hope that the rest of the year ends on a strong note as well, although that will be a bit complicated since I am starting a new job on Monday. So we'll see what I can get then. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed your December reading so far. I'd love to hear about what you've been reading, if you have found any new gems. And as always, feel free to leave comments and suggestions. Truly appreciate you stopping by. And until next time, I hope we can all stay safe and healthy. And as always, happy reading!